Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with The Creativity Cave. So happy to be stamping with you. I have a fantastic project to share with you. So stinking cute. Love it, love it, love it. And the best part is it's super easy. And I know you say, I say that all the time, but seriously, this is easy. So I'm going to create this cute card using some of the new products from the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog. The Holiday Catalog starts in just a couple of days on September 1st. Um, I'm looking, oh, here we go. I'm looking for my holiday catalog. Oh, while I can show you so far is the cover. Isn't it delightful? Ooh. I'm so excited. Of course, there are some fantastic Christmas things in here, but there's also some Halloween and all season kinds of things in there as well. <clears throat> in case you're thinking, I don't need a holiday catalog. You're wrong. It's awesome. Okay. So let me show you this super cute card. Happy Halloween. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's super easy to make. So I'm using the Spooky Fun Bundle. It comes with this adorable stamp set as well as a cute set of framelits. Let me grab them because here, well, okay. So there are some of the framelits. And then I just used these two framelits, this super cool tree edgelet. That's actually what it is, is an edgelet and the bat, of course. Then there's this fence, which of course I am looking at this and I see well beyond Halloween for this fence. I think all kinds of possibilities for this cute flowers, not just Halloween. And then there's some things that match the images in the stamp set. So this set is so cute. Love it, love it, love it. Very excited. Can you tell? Do you ever notice that I get excited about this stuff? It's real. I'm not faking. I never fake. Okay, so I have started, <coughs> excuse me, with a black card. I apologize, I have this terrible cold that I'm still trying to get over. Okay, so I have a black card, and all the details for this, all the colors listed, as well as um, dimensions will be on my blog. One second, though, I have to cut one piece of paper. I'm just over here cutting it really quick. Okay, so this is for the inside of my card because, check this out, <laughs> it's always fun to put stuff on the inside. All right, now, to make the background, because let's really be honest, that's what we're looking at here. Now, put a scrap piece of paper. Very easy to do, to be honest. This is so simple. And if you watched my video yesterday, you saw I used two of these colors, Rich Razzleberry Razzleberry and Elegant Eggplant. And these colors together, <coughs> excuse, oh, I'm so sorry, make a really awesome spooky background. <coughs> oh my gosh, I really apologize because who wants to listen to anybody? Heck, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm going to take my aqua painter and I like to have like a old towel or something to use next to my aqua painting because otherwise you'll scribble all over your paper and it'll be covered in minutes. But to start with this, I'm actually going to use my aqua painter. You could also spritz this with a little, like we have Stampin' Spritzers. That works pretty well too. But I just want to get this wet. Not like dripping off the page wet, but pardon the expression, moist. Okay. So I want to be a little lighter at the bottom just so that <clears throat> the color um, isn't too intense and you really get the impression of that silhouette tree in the background. So I'm just coloring right on here with my ink. And like I said, I want it to be darker at the top. So I'm going to just really kind of go over the whole thing. And you can see because I put water down, it just blends really nicely and the color moves. It's not streaky. It's nice and even. I want it a little streaky because that kind of gives you the the background, um, not, you know, the sky, sky's streaky, you know what I mean? Sunset look. I don't know what this is. This is like spooky sky. I don't know if it's sunset is the right word, but whatever. Okay. And I want to have some dark troubled clouds. And when I'm looking at this, <coughs> excuse me, 
I notice this a lot when I'm doing watercoloring with um, people in my classes and their cards, like if you look at these two, th this is not going to dry to be as dark as that. I need to add more color to really bring out the richness of the colors. So I'm going to do that, but I'm still trying to keep kind of a light area right here just so that that tree really pops. I actually kind of thought I got a little too crazy on my sample. So I'm still leaving that dark. And I want to, I do want to go all the way to the edges because I think it looks better that way. And I'm keeping everything in a horizontal motion. I don't want to go vertical because that will take away from, I think, the sunset look. Um, but you can do whatever you want. I mean, this is your card, right? I'm just showing you what I did. Okay, so I'm adding some of the eggplant. And you can see it just, it's really fun. You could go really dark and crazy or stay light. Now, if you notice your brush is getting dry, give it, give it a squeeze and then do you see the color or the water really gets flowing and then you're good to go again. And then I do like to kind of bring in <clears throat> my Razzleberry just so I don't lose it in the mix. And the other thing about this is everyone is gonna be different. Now, do you see how much darker it's gotten? I've left this part light, but look at how much darker it is around that area. So I'm digging it. I'm going to add maybe just a little bit of purple. This is the eggplant over here. And then this is good. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my brush. That's why the little rag is handy. I use burp rags from when my kids were little, although this is just an old crappy uh, dish cloth that I wouldn't want to dry my dishes with anymore, so I will wipe my paintbrush with it now. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this out. So I die cut. This is just a quarter sheet trimmed piece of black cardstock. And look at how awesome that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. Of course, I need this to dry. But um, I want to point out something else on here. You can see there's little splotches on here. I've done two things. I've spritzed this with my marker in black, but I also did splotches of eggplant. So let me show you how I did that because you can do this with your aqua painter and of course any color. So I'm going to take this and it still is a little bit wet. I want to squeeze my brush so that it's not like literally water dripping out of it, but it is good and wet, juicy. Like did you see that water kind of bubbled up but then it sucked back in. Okay and then what I'm going to do is pick up a whole bunch of my eggplant ink. So you can see there's a bunch on the end of my aqua painter. Then what I'm going to do is take, I actually happen to have an eggplant marker, but I'm just going to use it as a, as something to, to tap my aqua painter against. And I'm flicking it on here. And two things are happening. I'm getting flicks of color, but I'm also getting flicks of water. And so that water is putting little light splotches in here. And then there are also, you can see like right here and here and here, little splotches of the color. So it's kind of like two for one. And it's pretty awesome. Now make sure you clean your brush off after this because it is full of ink and now it's clean. You don't want to pick it up and use it like in yellow and that would be bad. Okay, <clears throat> so there it is, except this is right side up. So I've gotten some nice splotches and whatnot. I need to make this dry. So I'm actually going to prepare my... Um, and sorry, tangent, <laughs> tangent alert. Don't you think we could do something cool with this? I don't, I haven't figured it out yet, but I think something must happen. I'm not sure what, um, for now though, I'm going to use it as a scrap because I'm going to emboss my greeting. Same, or the, the stamp is coming right out of the stamp set. I'm going to use my embossing buddy on the black and I shall stamp uh, let's see. I took this off my block because I used another word. I'm going to use Versamark. We're hoping this dries. Are you giving it good vibes? We'll hit it with the heat gun because we got to emboss this. Okay, so I'm stamping Happy Halloween. <clears throat> Again, that's from the stamp set. I grab my copper embossing powder. If you haven't gotten any of our new copper powder, it came out with the big catalog this year, and I love it. And in the holiday catalog, we have copper foil sheets, which are gorgeous. Super excited about that. That was kind of like my, 
I don't want to say a dream come true because that might be giving it a little bit more credit than necessary, but I am excited we have copper paper. Okay, so I'm going to heat this. If you've been watching me emboss lately, you know I've been doing it from, <laughs> I've been heating it from behind. Wow, that almost sounded terrible. Um, and the heating from behind is really actually technically how you're supposed to do it. And that is according to a polymer chemist whose wife left me an awesome comment on one of my videos. So how handy is that? By the way, I apologize if that was out of the shot of the window. And then we'll just heat this paper so that it's good and dry. Um, you never want to heat, or I'm sorry, you never want to put together a wet card because it will be warped and messed up and terrible. That will make you angry. I'm going to use our classic label punch to punch out my greeting. And uh, I apologize if I have gone off on oh so many tangents. I'm just centering this up. <clears throat> I was doing it. It's, I do everything through the camera. I, oh my gosh, I just pointed it through the top of my camera like you could see that. <laughs> um, it's my phone that does the recording. And it's, I always do things looking, like right now I'm looking through my camera, but it's off a little bit than if you are actually looking at what you're doing. So, oh my gosh, whatever. I apologize. Okay, now I'm going to take this and layer it onto a piece of black cardstock. I think it just, adds a little extra something something to my card. I just like the look to have that extra black layer, even though I'm going to attach it to a black layer. Um, I suppose there's a really cool background Halloween set. It's called Halloween Grunge that I could use on the background. Oops, I see I missed two little pieces. We'll get those out. This, by the way, die cuts like a dream, which I just love. Really nice and easy. Okay, so I'll adhere this to the bottom, and then it's kind of like my um, my background is sort of a sandwich. I like the lighter look down here. I think it looks good. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to take some of my black metallic thread and wrap it around the bottom just a touch. So I'm putting a line of fast fuse on here, and then I will just put the end of my thread in that fast fuse and it does a great job of holding it um, onto the card. And then I will wrap this around a few times <clears throat> and then put the last bit. I apologize, I haven't really been talking at all today. Just to you guys on this video and all of a sudden I just feel all coffee and horse and bleh. So luckily you can't catch, cold, uh, catch a cold through a video, right? <laughs> Okay, so, oh, it'll help if I put some more adhesive on the back of this, though. All right, got this layered up on my card, and it looks fantastic, but it certainly needs a little something, don't you think? So somewhere I had die cut a bat. I don't know where it went. Here it is. That's what happens. These bats, they tend to get away. So I'm just going to put some adhesive right in the center of my bat, and then pop its wings up because, you know, it would kill me if I didn't have some dimension somewhere on my projects. Popped up those bat wings like it's really flying around in your house. He kidding. Does that freak any of you out? I hope not. That was not my intention. We have um, a little log cabin and um, there are bats that are outside at night all the time. They're, they always fly over our heads and it never really freaks me out. But once we were on our boat over the 4th of July for watching fireworks on the river and a bat flew like really close to our heads and I was just like, Wah! I've never freaked out, luckily. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now last but not least, let's stamp the inside of our card because I think that's fun to do. I used some basic gray ink for the inside as well as some whisper white. So let me get rid of these quick so I don't make a mess because that's kind of how I roll. Um, and then I just pulled a couple more images from that stamp set out to use with this. So I'm going to stamp some white ghosts because, of course, ghosts are in white. I mean, that would be crazy to do them in any other color. So I just stamped a couple of those right there with some white ink. Then I'll do my greeting. And um, you might laugh at this. So have some spooky fun 
which I think is cute. And then I will do a little bat right there. And then I put the eek and the little uh, tombstones at the bottom. Eek! Isn't that fun? So I'm just going to uh, adhere this inside of my card. And there you go. Hope you like this video. Check out my blog post for all the details. Thanks so much, guys. Bye!